All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to integrate exponential functions that have a base of e. Right, so previously we learned how to take the derivative of that exponential function, e to the power of x, and we found that its derivative was the same function, e to the power of x. And then we have the other version of that derivative where if you have e to the power of some function u, where u is defined with x, then that would be equal to e to that power of u times the derivative of u, right? So if you had e to the power of some other function that isn't x, such as maybe x squared, then the derivative would be e to the power of x squared times the derivative of x squared. And so since we know the derivative rules for this exponential function of e to the power of x, we should be able to figure out the integration rules, right? Because the integration process is the opposite of finding the derivative, right? Integration and differentiation are opposite operations. And so when we take the integral of something, right? When we are integrating a function, we are trying to find a function whose derivative is that function we are integrating, right? We are trying to find that antiderivative. And so if we wanted to integrate e to the power of x, the answer would be a function whose derivative is e to the power of x. And so this is pretty simple because the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. And so if we're looking for a function whose derivative is e to the power of x, well, it's right here, it's e to the power of x. And so that's where we get our integration rules for that exponential function of e to the power of x. We have the integral of e to the power of x dx is equal to e to the power of x plus c. And then we also have the version of that integral rule for when we would want to use u substitution. We have that the integral of e to the power of u du is equal to e to the power of u plus c. Okay, and so now let's look at some examples where we use these integration rules to integrate some exponential functions that have a base of e. All right, so for our first example, we have the integral of two times e to the power of x dx. And remember, this is our new integration rule that the integral of e to the x dx is equal to e to the x plus c. And so for this integral right here, I'll start by pulling this constant of two to the outside. And so we'll have that this is equal to two times the integral of e to the power of x dx. And so then according to this rule, the integral of e to the power of x dx will be e to the power of x plus c. And so we will have that this is equal to two times e to the power of x plus c. And so this is the antiderivative or the answer to our integral for this example. All right, so here's our second example. This time we have the integral of e to the power of 2x dx. And so for this example, we are going to need to use u substitution. And that is because we have e to the power of some function that is not just x, right? In this case, it is 2x. And so when you see that you have a power of a function that is not x, you most likely are going to want to set that equal to u, right? And so if we do that, we'll have u is equal to 2x, and then we will take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of 2x, which is just going to be two, because remember the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to the coefficient of that term, which in this case is two. And so then let's solve for du here. We will have that du is equal to two times dx. And so what we wanna do here when we use u substitution is we wanna replace something in our integral with du. And so whatever is on this side of this equation, whatever du is equal to, this needs to be somewhere in your integral. Now, I do see a dx right here, but I don't see a two anywhere else in this integral. And so I'm going to divide that over to the other side. So we'll have du divided by two is equal to dx. And so now on this side of the equation, we have dx, which we can find in our integral and we can replace it with du divided by two. And so then if we use that and we rewrite this integral in terms of u, we will have that this is equal to the integral of e to the power of u times du divided by two, right? We replaced two x with u because that's what we said it equal to. And we replaced dx with du divided by two, which is what we found that that was equal to. And so now we're ready to solve this integral. I'll start by pulling out this one half to the front. And so we'll have that this is equal to one half times the integral of e to the power of u times du. And so now, we can use our rule here that the integral of e to the power of u du is equal to e to the power of u plus c, right? That is the integral that we have right here. And so this will be equal to one half times e to the power of u plus c. But we're not done yet. 
now we need to replace u with what we set it equal to, which was 2x. And so our final answer is that this is equal to 1 half times e to the power of 2x plus c. Right, we just replaced u with 2x because that's what we set it equal to. And so then this is the antiderivative of this function or the answer to this integral. All right, so for our next example, we have the integral of 3x times e to the power of x squared dx. And so just like our previous example, in order to take the integral of this function, we are going to need to use u substitution because I see that we have e to the power of some function that is not just x, right? We have e to the power of x squared. And so we're most likely going to want to set that function in the exponent equal to u. But just keep in mind, when you use u substitution, when you set something equal to u, you should make sure that not only do you see that function, but you also see that function's derivative somewhere else in your integral. And so if we look at x squared here, if we're gonna set this equal to u, what would a derivative of x squared be? Well, remember, when you use the power rule for a function like x squared, the exponent is going to decrease by one, right? So the derivative of x squared is going to be some function of x to the first power. And so we wanna look for a function of x to the first power somewhere within our integral, which I see right here, we have three times x. And so since I see that, I'm confident that I should be able to set x squared equal to u and be able to properly integrate this function. And so if we set u equal to x squared, then we will wanna take the derivative of that. So we'll have that du dx is equal to the derivative of x squared. And that will be 2x because we will multiply the exponent down and then subtract one from the exponent. So we have two times x to the first power. And so now if we solve for du here by multiplying both sides by dx, we'll have that du is equal to 2x times dx. And then whatever du is equal to, we wanna look for this in our integral and see if we have a match. Now I see we have a 3x times dx, but over here we have 2x dx. And so everything matches up except for our constant multiples. And so what I'm going to do is just divide this two over to the other side. And so we'll have du divided by two is equal to x dx. And now we are able to replace this x and this dx by this term with du in it, right? We're not necessarily worried about matching up the coefficients or the constant multiples. We are only worried about matching up what is in terms of x because we're trying to change this integral to be in terms of u and not x. And so having du divided by two equal to x times dx is going to work just fine. All right, and so let's rewrite this integral in terms of u. We will have that this is equal to the integral of three times e to the power of u times du divided by two. Right, so we replaced x squared with u because that's what we set it equal to. This x squared is now u, and we replaced x times dx with du divided by two because that is what that was equal to. Right, so this x and this dx are replaced with du divided by two. And so now let's pull this three out to the front as well as this one half. If we pull those both out, we will have three halves on the outside. And so we'll have that this is equal to three halves times the integral of e to the power of u du. And now we can use our integration rule that the integral of e to the power of u du is equal to e to the power of u plus c. And so this will be equal to three halves times e to the power of u plus c. And then for our final answer, all we have to do is replace u with what we set it equal to, which is x squared. And so this will be equal to three halves times e to the power of x squared plus c. And so that is the antiderivative of our function or the answer to this integral. So next we have the integral of e to the power of two x plus four times e to the power of x plus one divided by e to the power of x dx. And so how do you think we're going to solve this integral? Well, whenever you have a series of terms in a numerator and only one term in the denominator, a good integration technique is to split this up into separate fractions. In this case, we would have three fractions because we have three terms in the numerator that are each being divided by this denominator. And so watch what happens if we do that. We will have that this is equal to the integral of e to the power of 2x divided by e to the power of x plus four times e to the power of x divided by e to the power of x plus one divided by e to the power of x. And that is still all multiplied by dx, right? All we did was take each of these three terms in the numerator and split them up by dividing them each by that same denominator. And so now what you'll notice is that we can simplify these terms a little bit and make this integral possible to solve. 
And so right here we have e to the power of 2x divided by e to the power of x. Remember that when you have two functions of the same base and you divide them, you subtract their exponents, right? So if you have x to the power of 5 divided by x to the third power, that would be equal to x squared because we subtracted 3 from 5, right? 5 minus 3 is 2. And so if we apply that to this scenario right here, we have the same base of e. We're going to be subtracting x from 2x. And so if we simplify, this will just be equal to the integral of e to the power of x, right? Because 2x minus x is just x. And then for our next term, you'll notice we have e to the power of x in the numerator and in the denominator. And so those are going to cancel out. And our next term will just be plus 4. And then for our last term, I'm going to simplify this a little bit by moving this e to the numerator by giving it a negative exponent. So we will have plus e to the power of negative x. And these are all still multiplied by dx. Okay, and so if I clean up my work here, we can now integrate each of these terms, but notice that for this third term, we're going to need to use u substitution because we have a function other than x in that power right, we have negative x. And so we're going to want to use u substitution. And so I'm gonna split up this integral to have these two terms in one integral and this term in a different integral. And so let me show you what I mean. We'll have that this is equal to the integral of e to the power of x plus four dx plus the integral of e to the power of negative x dx. Okay, and so if we use u substitution for this integral and we set u equal to negative x, we will have u is equal to negative x, and then we'll take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to negative one. Write the derivative of negative x, since x is to the first power, it's just gonna be equal to its coefficient, which is negative one. And so then we'll solve for du and multiply both sides by dx, and we'll have du is equal to negative dx, but I don't see a negative in our integral here, and so I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative one, so that the negative is on this side with the du, and our dx is positive. And so now we can replace dx in our integral here with negative du, and we can replace negative x with u. And so if I clean up my work, we will have that this is equal to the integral of e to the power of x plus four dx plus the integral of e to the power of u times negative du. Right, and then we can move this negative out to the front, so we would be subtracting this integral. And so I'm just gonna rewrite that. We'll make this negative, and then we will remove this negative. And so we're just gonna have e to the power of u times du. And so now we can integrate each of these functions separately. And so we'll start with this integral, and we know that the integral of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. And so we'll have that this is equal to e to the power of x plus the integral of four, and remember that when you integrate a constant, you just multiply it by the variable that you are integrating with respect to. In this case, we are integrating with respect to x because we have a dx right here, and so we're gonna be multiplying by x, and so we have four x, and then we will subtract this integral, and we know that the integral of e to the power of u du is e to the power of u plus c. And now we just have one more step here. We just have to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is negative x. And so I'll clean up my work here one more time, and we will have that this is equal to e to the power of x plus 4x minus e to the power of negative x plus c. And so then if you wanted to, one more step that you could take is to rewrite this e to the negative x power as just one divided by e to the power of x, right? We can move this to a denominator, and so that power would become positive, not negative. And so if we do that, we will have one divided by e to the power of positive x. And this will be the antiderivative, or the answer, to this integral. Okay, so here we have the integral of e to the power of 3x divided by one plus e to the power of 3x times dx. And so how are we going to integrate this function? Your first thought might be to set 3x equal to u, because at this point I've been telling you that if you see e to the power of some function other than x, you should probably set that equal to u. But that's not going to work in this case because we have two exponential functions of e to the power of 3x, right? We have two of these. And so setting that exponent equal to u isn't going to make this integral any easier to solve. And so we need a different idea. We need a different way to solve this integral. 
we're still going to need to use substitution because there's no other way that we are going to integrate this, right? We can't use any of our other rules to integrate this. And there's nothing we can do to simplify this either. Unlike our previous example, we only have one term in the numerator, but two in the denominator. And so we can't split this up into several fractions. In order to do that, we would need only one term in the denominator and multiple terms in the numerator but that's not the case here. And so what are we going to do? Well, like I said, we're still going to want to use u substitution. And so let's just ask ourselves that question. Do you see a function and its derivative? If you do, then you wanna set that function equal to u. And so if we look at our function here, within the function, we have a function in the numerator of e to the power of three x, and we have a function in the denominator of one plus e to the power of three x. And so I want you to remember something about the derivative of e to the power of some function, right? The derivative of e to the power of u, where u is some function of x, that is equal to e to the power of u times the derivative of u. And so if we were to set u equal to our denominator here of one plus e to the power of three x, notice that the derivative would involve e to the power of three x. Right, so let me show you what I mean. If we set u equal to one plus e to the power of three x, and we take the derivative, we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of one, which is zero because one is a constant, but then the derivative of e to the power of three x will be e to the power of three x times the derivative of what is in our exponent, and the derivative of three x is just three, because x is to the first power, and so the derivative is just the coefficient. Okay, and so if we look at this derivative here, we have e to the power of three x times some constant, which is going to match up pretty nicely with what we have in the numerator of our integral here, right? We don't see that three there, so we'll just divide that over later, but ultimately, we have a function and its derivative, and so this u substitution process is going to work. And so if we solve for du, we'll have du is equal to three times e to the power of three x times dx, right? We just multiplied both sides by dx. And so then since I don't see this constant of three in our integral, I'm going to divide it over like I said. And so we'll have du divided by three is equal to e to the power of three x dx. And so now we can change this integral to be in terms of u. We can replace the denominator with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we can replace e to the power of three x dx with du divided by three, right? That is what that is equal to. And so we can rewrite our integral and have that this is equal to the integral of one divided by u times du divided by three, okay? And so then if we pull this one third out to the front, we'll have that this is equal to one third times the integral of one divided by u du. And so then what we're left with is something that we know how to take the integral of. We know that the integral of one divided by u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, right? So we can integrate this rational function with one divided by u by using this log rule of integration. And so we'll have that this is equal to one third times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And so then if I clean up my work here, our last step is going to be to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is one plus e to the power of three x. And so we'll have that this is equal to one third times the natural log of the absolute value of one plus e to the power of three x plus c. And so this is the solution to this integral or the antiderivative of this function. And so now just a quick note, we could also replace these absolute value bars with just regular parentheses because e to the power of three x is always going to output a positive value and we're just adding one to it. So we know that the value inside these absolute value bars will always be positive. And so the absolute value bars are not going to be necessary. We can just have parentheses, okay? And so with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.